Welcome to Whiskey's The Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and it's Wednesday. It's time for another Sip It or Skip It episode. If you are new to the channel and you're not familiar with this episode, I have all of my whiskeys in my collection randomized on my phone. I'm gonna spin the wheel, whatever it selects. I'm gonna pull it off the shelf, do a quick review, and let you know if I'm gonna keep sipping on the bottle until it's gone, and then I'm gonna replace it because I like it. Or once the bottle's gone, I'm gonna skip buying it and move on to something else. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see what we are doing today. All right, every time this wheel stops, I get, you know, a little bit giddy. Oh, Remus repeal number seven. I do not believe Remus repeal number eight is out just yet from this uh, review, or at least from the time that I'm shooting this, but I'm pretty sure it's right around the corner. So let me go ahead and get Remus repeal number seven off the shelf, pour it and do a quick review. All right, Remus repeal number seven. As you can tell, not a lot gone in this bottle. I don't really think that's a true representation of what I think I remember from this. I just haven't had time to actually go back to this. So as always, the information for the whiskey is right here, along with my sip it and skip it tallies up to this point. I also have a document in the description. So if you are curious on all of my sip it and skip it up to this point, sip it or skip it up to this point, you can take a look at that document. It's not a fancy document, it's just a chronological order of all of the whiskeys that I have done within this series and where I stand as far as what will I sip and what am I going to be skipping. Before I get into this, I also wanna let you know that I do have a June and July giveaway happening. The rules to that giveaway are in the description below. I highly encourage you to read those rules before you start donating to the channel because this is only available to the US residents only. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing on the nose. There's a good amount of cherry and a slight amount of spice. On top of that cherry note, there's some brown sugar and vanilla. And it does have a slight amount of like a, a toasty note, not bread toast, but like a toasted barrel. Get a little bit of marshmallow, a marshmallow toasted note. And now that I'm saying a marshmallow toasted note, I'm also picking up a little bit of a, like a cinnamon graham cracker. I don't remember it smelling this sweet, but all of those notes, I'm, I'm enjoying quite a bit. It does come across as a little bit of a proofy note, stings the nose just a little bit. I know there are only a hundred proof, but it does smell a little bit hot. It is a hundred proof, right? I always have to remind myself. Yeah, they're hundred proof, 50% ABV. And I think the oldest stuff in it, well, the information was there. I'm not gonna get into that. All right, it smells pretty good. How does it taste? Let's go ahead and get this thing on the palate. Yeah, that comes across as pretty mellow. I expected it to be a little bit more of an ABV punch once it hit my tongue, based on what I was getting on the nose. It's well-rounded, it's an easy sipper. I think it has all of the traditional bourbon notes. Vanilla, brown sugar, caramel. It has a little bit of a cherry note, not much. And then it has a good balance of spice. And I know those are general notes, but when you're looking at a general straight down home plate type bourbon notes, that's kind of what you're getting. You're getting vanilla, caramel, brown sugar, and a little bit of spice. And I'm shocked that this is not drinking as hot as I was getting on the nose. But again, that was only the first sip. You can never trust that first sip. You bought, you know, you kind of have to acclimate to that sip. And then I'm gonna concentrate on that second sip, see what it does to the side of my tongue, what it does on the finish, and if any other notes pop up. So cheers, everybody. Here we go for the second sip. Second sip, not a whole lot has changed. It, the ABV really doesn't hit me until it gets to the finish. The arrival in the mid palate is pretty flat. And then once it hits the finish or the back of the palate, right before you end up swallowing, that's where all of the notes come in. So it does hit pretty flat. And then there's a little bit of a spike. You get all those traditional bourbon notes and then it vanishes pretty quick after that. So I would say probably short to a medium finish. That is a little bit disturbing. I wouldn't say disturbing, but it's a little bit disappointing that the arrival and the mid palate are pretty flat. But if you can work your way through that, it has a pretty good finish, and I think that's what's saving this bottle. Not much more to say other than that. Based on the other releases that I have, the five and the six, I think the seven 
is probably going to rank a little bit lower than those other two. Now, don't get me wrong, by any by no means is this a bad bourbon. It's just not something that I would reach for. I have had this maybe once or twice before just to compare it to the five and the six, but I haven't touched it again since this review. So all of those remarks are probably going to be pretty glaring as far as whether this is going to be a sip or a skip. Even though it is good, the traditional bourbon notes, I don't know how many times I've said that, but for $100, I think this is still going to go into the skip column. I've been on a horrible run of skips lately. Hopefully the later part of July will start to change this up a little bit. But Remus Repeal number seven is going to be a skip. Let me know in the comments down below if you have had five, six, or seven or any of the other Remus Repeal versions, which one do you like the most? And based on my calendar, this is coming out July 10th, which means tomorrow, July 11th, I am hitting the road to go up to Casper, Wyoming to participate in my third Master Series event with my brother-in-law for the KCBS barbecue competitions. Keep a lookout in the community tab to see our results. And again, as a reminder, the June and July giveaway are happening. Just read the description for the rules. And if you want to support the channel, you can donate any increment of $5, U.S. participants only. So wherever you're at in your journey, I hope you're enjoying it. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody.